What is good, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Foxy. Welcome back to the Fox's Den. Getting into another reaction, episode 10, Ninja Kamui. Excited to see if these episodes pick it the fuck up for these final episodes because we got 10, 11, 12. Last three episodes. We're getting into the third to last, I guess you would say. Bro, I need to pick this shit up because last episode was probably one of the best episodes that we had in terms of like the looking at the past couple weeks of episodes because ever since the mechs were introduced, uh, that was a very interesting concept, but definitely threw a lot of us through a loop. Like, okay, wasn't expecting to have mechs in a ninja show. Still kind of cool, but it was like, okay, what the hell's going on? And then last episode finally was a little bit more action-packed compared to the weeks before. We were getting some backstory on, like, the ninja clan, some insight on what Yamaji's trying to accomplish, what Alza's trying to accomplish, stuff like that. So a lot of talking, a lot of figuring things out, not too much really happening. And then last episode, we, we did get some action, but then again, it was still in the grand scheme of things. If you compare it to other shows, it was not crazy exciting or at least not crazy animation or anything there was definitely a few moments while i was watching it i was like that looks kind of weird <laughs> like the animation i don't know what has happened like ever since like a certain point in the show but like the first like episode or two was like holy fuck this is crazy hand-to-hand -hand combat this animation looks fucking insane to where last episode was one of the best ones that we've had yet but still kind of lackluster in terms of the animation i mean i feel like we didn't even really get to see a proper fight between Big D and Higan, and somehow Higan defeated him. And it was like Big D was completely okay with it. He was like, Oh, that was a magnificent battle, like whatever. And it's like, Okay, we didn't really even see much of that fight, and it's just over all of a sudden. And then, of course, fucking Alza, the, the head of Alza, uh, I can't remember his fucking name, but. The blonde dude, he has the suits hooked up to where, you know, he can just, you know, self-destruct them if he wants to. And that's exactly what he did, hoping to take all of those people that were around the area out. He gone included Mike, everybody that was like really their, you know, only opposing force or at least their only opposing force right now. But Big D protected he gone with one of his centipedes. Emma protected Mike with her uh, robots, like her AI robots. Jason was in the 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 beetle, the car, like the computer, so he was good in there. And then Emma's the one that takes on the blast full force and obviously Big D he disintegrated in the dust because it was from his suit. But yeah, Emma got caught up in that and now she's officially passed away and it's like, dude, what the fuck, bro? I was I was expecting more of a fight between Big D and Hagan, and then on top of that, Emma fucking officially dies after we already thought she was dead, and then she lives through that. It's like okay, like I don't know, bro. It was an interesting choice to just kill her off in that moment. I guess Jason's gonna be the one taking over the hacking and computer stuff now, and all that kind of shit, and maybe you know is the one that's gonna have to like get them back into the city and, and all this other stuff. I don't know what Mike is really capable of in terms of like fighting ninjas and stuff i don't think he's that capable at all so i get, i feel like he's just along for the ride at this point unless i mean he can get but then again like he's he's about to retire from the fbi like he's not even really officially with them right now he's just doing his own thing but i don't know how he's he's very useful and then he gone i mean he, obviously he's determined to try and take down yamaji and the current ninja clan so that's our goal, but I really don't know how we're what, like where we go from here. So I'm at least excited to see how this episode, like what direction we go into now, you know, because we saw at the end that Reaper suit is ready. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Hopefully that fight actually fucking matches up to be something crazy because it feels like it's been kind of lackluster ever since these mechs got introduced, like the animation I'm saying. And um, Big D's and Higan's fight is just one example of that. Like we hardly saw shit. So... Without further ado, let's get into the episode. Let's get into the reaction. If you guys enjoy the reaction, please like down below. Comment. Let me know what you think. Subscribe if you're new and hit the notification bell so you know the next one's dropping. Let's get into it. Episode 10, Ninja Kamui. We're getting a backstory on Reaper now. You know, he is fucking filled with rage looking at this guy. <laughs> Damn, who the fuck is shooting up the whole alleyway? Oh, it's the ninjas. They had guns? 
So he followed them, I guess? I mean, the way he was breathing, he wanted to do that shit to that guy. Oh, is he about to mutilate his body? Oh my god. This is how Yamaji met the Reaper and I guess took him in. Wow. So he met Yamaji and was kind of under Yamaji more than anybody else in the clan, I feel like. Even though there was a different head of the clan, like, he was always with Yamaji. That's good to know. That's why he's fucking so loyal to him. Whereas the other two, Mary and Higan, didn't really... Nah, they were not about that shit. Oh, his suit's kind of blue looking. Oh, okay, I thought it was like... Grayish black. Alright. Alright, let's get into it, come on. Next gas, 179 miles, that's crazy, no? Damn! Well, yeah, it's an energy drink, right? Yeah, so it has caffeine in it and shit. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's, not, it's rare to see fucking Ducky smile. That's why she thought she was going to die alone, because that's how most ninjas do. They die alone, and, you know, the other ninjas, it's always the mission first. Fuck who died, bro. We got to keep moving. And so they just die alone. So rot. Yeah, but how much is the is the media just willing to fucking release that? No problem. Well, hey, Jason, you're our best bet right now, buddy, and really all, the only person we got, so come on. Oh, shit, they already got their one posters up and everything. Well, this is going to make them even harder to move. Why is there even a wanted poster for Emma if you know you killed her? But maybe that's just to cover his own tracks even more. He did yeah, see look he <laughs> Bro, he's so pissed. He wants to say something so bad. But at least that time he didn't show his temper in front of him. Cause that's what that dude was talking about. Like if hey, if you're gonna fucking blow your steam off like that, like you're not gonna be making relationships with people. Oh, he's tr he's stealing all of this information himself too. He's planning on being able to use it for his own clan. That's what he's been doing while working with Alza. He's also gotten the means to be able to reproduce the Gosuku gear. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was about to say. Like, yeah, the media is going to manipulate whatever. I mean, that's how it seems to be in real life, too. That's gotta be fucking Reaper, bro. That bird has gotta be connected to Reaper with the eye and everything. Oh, 
You're going to fight a grown no. So yeah, this has been Yamaji's goal from the from the get go, bro. And he's kind of groomed the Reaper to be his close aide, like his right hand man that will never fucking betray his loyalty. God damn! Yeah, like he really upholded like Yamaji's ideals or Yamaji kind of like manipulated what Reaper already had inside of him, which is like this like anger and aggression. A duel. Mm. So they had a duel like this a long time ago while they were training to become ninjas. And he gone one. Or no, it was close. Yeah, draw, okay. So they're evenly matched, which, yeah, is to be expected. Damn, see, like, this is the type of animation I'm trying to see consistently, bro. That shit looks fire. Wow, it was, it was only them three that passed. Bro, he just going out there to fucking fuck them up, bro. Yo, nah. <laughs> Reaper's all about the smoke. Ooh. First person angle? Okay. See, we need more of this shit, man. This is all like flashback stuff. Did he give up? Did he actually give up? I mean, obviously they made it out of that mission. Oh, he was unconscious and he got and Mary handled the rest. See, he's seeing their differing opinions in in a real mission. He's like, I should be dead right now. And that's what he was taught. That's what all of them are taught. But he takes it like more seriously because he's right under Yamaji. Oh, a little, a little duo. See, yeah, nah, this shit is fire, bro. That's what I'm talking about. That's why the fucking... I don't know how I feel about the mechs, bro. I mean, we're gonna have to wait and see how their fight is between the mechs. Because if it's anything like Kigan versus Big D, then I'm, I'm off, bro. Like, he couldn't bring himself to understand, like, why these two are so... I guess, friendly, or like... Uh-huh. Really? Wow, okay, so that's why he's so close with crows. It sure is. That's what they thought until shit went south. And they ended up having a family together, obviously, because, yeah, he probably felt like betrayed by them since they left to have their own little family and shit. Because, yeah, see, they, they got along pretty well together at one point, all three of them. But she got pregnant, they ex exiled themselves, try to escape, have a family. He probably did not fuck with that. Or maybe it was just because there was no other choice. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, they're telling- they told him. <laughs> well, at least they actually told him they were honest. He could have killed them right there, but he didn't. He felt betrayed, but he- Bro, such conflicting feelings for him.
Mm-hmm. Put him in a dark place again. He's only with the crows once again. Damn. Oh, yeah, and his sake cup broke. I wonder if that's gonna, if any of those lingering feelings is gonna affect his battle with Higan. So wait, are they having like an actual, just straight up ninja duel, or they, do they both have their suits with them? Oh, they are. Okay, yeah, he's in a suit. Yep. Reaper suit looks dope too. I wasn't expecting it to bleed blue. They're kind of opposite colors if you think about it. red versus blue. Like, makes sense. Wow, yo, he, Mike don't give a fuck. He straight up pulled up in his car. He's like, yo, you a bitch, bro, for real. <laughs> Wow, he's that willing. Damn, fucking bitch, man. Oh, that CGI. I mean, it looks kind of weird, but it looks kind of dope, too. Now that it's actually focused on the fight entirely instead of cutting from this and then back to something else. Doesn't look terrible, but it also doesn't. Okay, this is. Yeah, okay, all right, there we go. It's gonna cliffhang us for sure, though. This episode's about to end. We better get some crazy shit next episode, like this full fight. Damn! She's like, why did he do this with fucking Higan and Big D? But I guess it's just because Big D's kind of like a side character. CGI is definitely definitely interesting looking. But see, like when you compare like this CGI, like not, they're focusing on the fight, it looks dope. But like compared to like the fire ass choreography in the 2D animation we saw earlier in the show, I mean, I think we know. I think we can both agree on what's fucking what's fucking better. At least they're actually focusing on this shit, though. Damn! Both broke their suits. Alright, bet. Say fucking less. Next episode's gonna be a fucking fire... It better be the rest of the fight between them motherfuckers. I was surprised they even started it that much. Like that was a that was a good amount of them fighting. I mean, they're already out of the suits, so I don't think there's no more Gosuku, Gosuku, right? That's that's the what the suits are called, the mechs. I don't think there's gonna be no more of that fighting between them. So it's gonna be straight up hands and ninja shit, which is like what we fucking love. That's what they hooked us in with in the beginning of the show. So hopefully that's what it is. I hope I hope to see some. If that's the case, now that they're out of their suits, I hope to see some fire ass hand to hand combat between them, bro. That's gonna that's gonna be lit. That should be a good fucking episode next episode. This this one was a pretty good one too. I just wish they would have done the same thing with Big D versus versus Higan, bro. Like that fight was like we hardly saw any of it. Like they should have. If, if they're gonna use that CGI type animation with the mech fighting and stuff, they should have gone in a little bit more. I feel like with that, like Big D, like just <laughs> he got stabbed. Done. That was it. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? I'm excited for next episode, though. That should be fire if they're actually both going to be hand-to-hand -hand combat. That's going to be lit. Alrighty, guys. What another amazing episode of Ninja Com. We That was a good fucking watch. We actually made some progress on, you know, just Mike actually trying to get his partner once again to fucking help him out a little bit, but doesn't. That was at the end of the episode. The head of Owls is still trying to, you know, convince that one politician or whoever the fuck is in charge of whatever that guy is. And he keeps on getting in touch with through video calls. Like, yo, you know, the power plants are safe. We're all good. You know, it's all, it's all, it's all safe. You know what I'm saying? Let's continue our work together. You know, he's trying to move things along, but that dude isn't convinced, especially after the way that he threw a temper in the last video call. And he mentioned that he's like, yeah, if you keep on, you know, 
ending converse, conversations in such a way, then you're not going to make many, many friends. And that's just basically saying like, you're not going to make much connections or relationships in, in pursuing what you want to pursue if you can't uphold yourself in a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Uh, which again, like he was pissed after that phone call, like he, or video call, he was pissed. <laughs> he wanted to say something so bad, but he actually hold himself back that time and then just kind of, you know, bitched or, you know, uh, shit talked himself you know, talking to himself after the video call. So they're still trying to make their moves. And then uh, the, what he was trying to reassure him that why it's so safe is because they already like put out basically wanted posters or, or bounties, like uh, informing the country or out of city, whatever, that these four are terrorists and they tried to attack our facilities and that blah, blah, blah. So like they got like, they gotta be even more careful now. Uh, and that's all four of the ones that have been together, Mike, Emma, Egon, and Jason, even though Emma has already passed away. So they gotta be on their toes. And then that's when I think Mike left to go talk to his old partner is when that crow showed up. And that was obviously that crow is connected to Reaper because we learned a little bit more of his backstory, like where some of his anger and aggression comes from because he's always been you know just going through a hard fucking time uh abandoned by his parents left to rot on some mountain like just could like could, could barely do anything but the crows apparently took care of him and fed him that's why he's so close with crows and then obviously like this crow that look kind of looks like him like with the whole like you know eye missing on one side and whatnot like it's blind or whatever oh the crow came and was holding i think a piece of that broken sake cup if i'm not mistaken and that was what signified to Egon like oh this is a, this is a duel like this is a challenge to a duel and Jason was confused like what you're gonna fight a crow like no motherfucker <laughs> it's, it's fucking reaper calling him out and sure enough they go to a certain location and uh it was one of their old hideouts and that's where reaper was waiting for him and they go in on each other with the gosuku gear and everything you know but both of their mechs going at, going at it like th this time they actually sh like I'm surprised they even showed this much where basically the entire fight with the mechs with both of them is already over like it showed a good sequence although it was cgi obviously right you know this there's there's always going to be you know arguments and, and discussion around cgi and, and when it, when it when it's useful when it if does is it too much is, is it does it look good like i think it looked great right there and it, as long as they were showing the entirety of the fight which they did which i wish they would have done with big d but like we got snippets and then all of a sudden he's stabbed and he's done it's like okay fight's over like what like that's not a fight bro but we got that at the end of the episode with reaper versus he them actually going at it in their mechs and then they're so fucking strong they are they're already both out of their mechs like it, it both of their mechs went into fucking pieces so if i had to guess next episode like i don't think they're gonna just put their fucking suits back together that quickly and is if, if that's the, like did it break apart naturally like where you like how you put it on like how you connect the certain pieces and everything around your body or was it literally shattered where neither of them are going to be able to use their suits after this whether which one survives or dies right but I, i'm assuming that it just fell into the pieces like it's natural you know puzzle pieces and shit like it's not completely shattered and they can get back into it if they want to once they're done with this fight but i don't think either of them are going to give them each other the chance to like put their suit back together so i'm assuming that we're gonna get straight up hands in actual ninja combat next episode which should be fucking fire because that's how they pulled us in in the beginning of the season like the first episode was fucking crazy this hand-to-hand -hand combat the choreography the amazing 2d animation it looked great and then we get to the mechs you know portion of the um season where they introduced the mechs and it's like okay all of a sudden there's this like a, a, a overwhelming amount of cgi and it doesn't look anything of like what we were seeing in the beginning of the show and it's like okay they kind of fucking got us with that shit but at least with the fight at the end of this episode starting and them fighting the, each other in their mechs at least it focused on that entirely like the, the the camera was around them the entire time the camera you know what i'm saying like moving around them and, and the whole cgi like it focused on them the entire time it wasn't cutting away to like maybe if like jason came in with he gone and he was like witnessing the fight or something it wasn't cutting to him and seeing his reaction and then you're not seeing the fucking fight the entire time like at least we saw it the entire time this time so that's fucking nice but now that they're out of the suits i'm expecting some fire fucking combat next episode and that's all i can hope for so uh that's where we at that's where we at with ninja Kamui. It was a pretty good episode. Can't fucking complain. 
Uh, let me know what you guys think. If you guys enjoyed the reaction, please like down below. Comment, subscribe if you're new. Hit that notification bell so the next one's dropping. I'll see you on the next one. Y'all be good. Deuces.